first thing that I'm going to try to show you is this particular woven fly. Uh, okay. A bit of background here. So this is a two-tone floss fly. You can see a lighter belly and a darker back and the copper rib that gives it some segmentation. I'll be circulating this fly for you to see, to see better. And uh, I'll tie a more or less generic version of this and I'll point out to material substitutions that you could make along the way. So the hook is a Daiichi 1260 number 8, but I don't think that's really important. Anything that's, you know, longish shank so you can... This is supposed to be a stonefly, right? So you want a longer body, right? So just look at a picture of a stonefly if you don't happen to have a well aerated aquarium with flowing water. I guess these are finicky beasts to keep. Um, and then a bead to match. In this particular case, this is a, it's a copper colored bead in 530 seconds. Okay, so if you want to match exactly what I'm doing here, although you can see that the sample fly is a slightly different animal. Okay? Like I said, that's not that important. So to start with a bit of thread, and the starting thread I'm going to use here, and you can use it throughout the fly, is a 3 odd thread. I want something thick so I can bridge the gap that I'm going to get once I put the wire on the hook. But I want to first put on a tail. Okay, so for tail here, a little bit of pheasant tail, and you have choices. You can use, you know, ring neck pheasant. You can use golden. Maybe this is a better color match for this, so let's use this. If I use the other one, the tips are kind of uh, reddish-brownish, and this one gives me a black and gold combination, which I think is a little bit more appropriate if I'm, if what I'm think, if what I'm thinking about is um, golden stone. Okay, so a little clump here. This is a little easier than dealing with biots because there's no issue of other than you know kind of aligning the tips a little bit and just putting the thing on the hook. There's really no... And you may notice here that I'm making things difficult for myself by not having the vise at an angle. There's a good reason for this because when we do the weave, it's easier to do the weave upside down. If you have a fancy rotary vise, you don't have this problem. Well, mine is not fancy enough, but the club has just got 15 of the fancy kind, so we should be able to do that. Uh, I think this tail is a bit long, so let's be perfectionist about this and see if we can shorten it a little. So undo a few wraps of thread, pull on the pheasant. Okay, that looks better. You got it. You got your thread. I've un I've taken care of that already. Thank you. Yeah, like I said, this is a tough audience to tie flies for because they're not going to miss any of the mistakes you make. However, that shouldn't discourage anyone from just doing it. Okay, now we want to put on wire. Wire, wire, wire. I like to fish these things in the national park, so lead-free is my choice, 0 0.2, 0 0.25 depending on how much weight you want to put, what profile you want to get. I'm just going to start with a 0.25 because it's a little bit easier to get things right if I don't use wire that's too thick. And in this particular case, I'm just going to do a thorax. If you use thinner wire, you can start in the, at the abdomen, go up front, and then wrap back, and then you get, a, you get even more, more weight. But my feeling is see. Well, well. Long time no tie, I guess. That's what's happening here. Okay. So, if you start like this with the pliers, you don't have to do any, any sort of funny cutting. And in this particular case, as you can see, my wire is a little bit thinner. I just underestimated the thickness of the uh, the thickness of the hook shank 
theory says you should be aiming for a wire thickness that matches the thickness of the shank, if I'm not mistaken. That's the theory. As you can see, I'm not adhering to the theory very well here. Anyway, let's say that I'm satisfied with this and I'm just going to pinch the wire off. I don't like to ruin my scissors with wire. Okay? So now what I want to achieve is also a little bit of a flattened profile. So I'm just going to take the pliers that I used to debarb the hook and smash this wire a little bit. And this is going to give me a, a flatter profile. I think you can sort of see the difference here, right? From seen from above and just seen in profile. And the other thing that's important when you weave is that you start off with as smooth of an underbody as you can. Okay? And so this, this wire business and this flattening, as you can see here, it just gives you a little bit of an uneven beast to start with. So just, you know, that's where I like the, that's where I like the heavy, the heavy thread because it makes kind of short work of this business of smoothing out the underbody, okay? And here you just go, kind of it depends on how perfectionist you want to be in doing this, okay? Personally, I would say this is good enough. Okay, leave it like that. Okay, now we come to the floss. I'm using two tones of floss. I'm using a brown, this one, and some kind of um, golden orange that just kind of looks good to me. Okay, you can come here and, and look at the exact colors I'm using. I, don't know how important this is, but the end result kind of has a nice color combination. Uh, two more things I should say for those who don't already know these two particular tricks. One is that it's very handy to use a bobbin when you're weaving. It gives you much, much better control over whatever material you're using for the weave. Okay? Also for the uh, Scottish amongst us, which I'm not one, but I'm behaving like one, there is no waste whatsoever. You tie this on, you weave, you finish weaving, you cut it off, you don't throw away one crumb of material. The second thing is using the spool keeper, this elastic thingy with, with a bead on top, that is very handy for keeping your material from unraveling. It also gives you constant tension as you weave. So you don't have to worry about that because the tension is taken care of by the uh, by the spool keeper, so all my all my things maybe I can show you here have a box full of these things, and they all have spool keepers on them. You know, you spend a pleasant afternoon once the snow is on the ground, and you make yourself you know 100 of these things. Never throw away uh, an empty thread bobbin. You can always spool on it other materials that you want to use for this kind of purpose, and then you're set. Okay. Enough of that uh, talk. So two things. The, the lighter color that's going to be on the belly, and this is vastly more important to do with the, uh, with the wire, but I'm going to do the both flies the same way. So I want to tie that on, the, on my near side. Okay? So I attach it at the front. So this is the floss. I attach it at the front. And I go back, wrapping thread over it so that it hangs loose at the tail end of the body. Okay. And then I let this hang somewhere out of the way, hopefully. Go back and repeat with the darker floss. And sometimes a little lick of the floss is going to keep the strands together. So just attach it. With the floss it's easy because it doesn't really matter if it's not exactly on the side of the hook. With the wire it's vastly more important that you keep it on the side of the hook, but because it's rigid it also makes it a lot easier. Okay, 
So at this point, we've got our two flosses tied on, and we've got to get rid of the thread. So a quick knot, and we're going to tie it off. Okay. Now we're ready for the fun, and the, oops, here, okay, good. So like I said, it's easier to do this weaving if let me try it like this first. Maybe it's, it's visible on the screen. Okay. So what I normally do is I turn the vise towards me so I'm looking down towards the, the point of the hook. Okay. So now I just have to remember how this is done. But it does come back easily after a little bit of practice. So the idea is, remember, we want the, uh, we want the yellow on top and the brown on the bottom, right? And how this works is, is the following way. I want to cross these over. Oops. I can't see what I'm doing here very well. Okay. Got to make sure that I'm not doing anything bad to the, to the tails of this thing. Okay. So, one color on, in one hand, one color in the other hand. And the idea is very simple. You put this on the, okay, here's where you don't see it. So what I took is I took the light strand and placed it on the abdomen. Then I hook it over with the other floss, which now I place on the bottom. Now this is held in place. I move the yellow back, I hook it again with the brown. And then I move the brown back in position so I can catch it on the other side. Right? As I'm doing this, I'm building the back as well. Right? I move the yellow again, I hold it and it's kind of nice to try to keep the knots on one side and tension equal so that it comes out even and the wraps tight to each other and you just keep going and eventually you may be getting good at this I don't do it often enough to get good at it but I can still tie flies okay so you keep as you can see you don't change the spools stay each in its own hand Right. Remember, I had the um, so I started with the belly color on my near side. Now I turn the fly upside down, so now that's on the on my right side. So I've actually had to cross first. But you're not going to have to remember this. I I can't. I just sit in front of the hook and think. Okay, I want the light color on the belly, and I want the dark color on the back. And the trick is. The one thing that I, I do remember is the following, that as I place the belly color on the belly, I keep using the dark color, the back color, to keep catching it from underneath. And that's really all I remember. And then I just keep, then I just keep weaving, okay? So if you guys want to actually see, from my perspective, the only thing I can suggest is come over here and look over my shoulder because like I said, I'm not sure how well this, this is illustrating and how well I'm explaining it, explaining it in words. Okay? It's an experience thing, Mark. I'm sorry? It's an experience thing. You, you kind of have to do it, yes. I, I, don't, I don't deny that. Okay, now I might have gone a little too far, but let's not worry about that. This is going to be an overdressed fly. Okay, so now we have done the, the weaving business. And uh, I'm going to switch to slightly lighter, lighter thread because I want... See, the problem is you can't really tie these off at this point because they'll, uh, they're a little thick. So what I need to do first is attach back my thread and then I can... I can maneuver around and I can tie this off properly. Okay. So 
So all I want is, and this is really easy with the floss, because it's not so thick. With the wire, I'm going to have to worry about it a little bit more. Okay. So I just reattached some brown thread in this case, a little thinner, so I don't want to overbuild things, and I want to match a little bit the color of what I'm doing. Okay, so I don't know if the colors are very visible here. You can see the golden, the golden belly, and then this is the side view, and this is from the top. Okay, and now I realize that I forgot to attach the wire ribbing. Ah oh, well, this is going to be without a wire rib, but normally somebody should have told me from the audience, you forgot to attach the wire rib here after putting the tail before weaving, wire rib goes on. Okay, now the easiest thing to do at this point is to use that magic material called seal fur. Take a pinch of seal fur, put it on the thread. Try to spin it without poking yourself too hard with a hook. Okay. Um, you do a spinning loop if that's going to make you feel better. Okay, so this way I can show you I know how to use this tool. Okay. So this is going to be my little thorax. Here again, there are choices. You can use this only at the end, and you can add some more pheasant fibers as legs. That also works. And now do a little whip finish just behind the bead. And the final thing to do is to make this a bit more fuzzy is to use some kind of a tool unless you just want to let the fish do the job for you. That's also an option, the good one. This fly gets better as you catch fish with it, like every fly that we know. So here I'm going to use a magic popsicle tool that came from one of our Actually, I think, Mike, you brought a bunch of these ready-made. You didn't even make us make them ourselves. So you can you know, take this and scruffy this thing up. And that is the first woven fly. Okay. So now, basically, you can do exactly what I've shown you here with other materials. So this is with floss. Okay. I've never tried, so this is, uh, what's it called? Um, it's not the acetate floss, it's the other one, the uh, whatever. The stuff that doesn't, f that doesn't fray so badly, okay? Um,